Good morning, everybody. Back at my favorite ledge. Getting ready to see what's out here. not rigging this weedless because I'm going for a better hook set. I'm not rigging this weedless because I, I want a better hook set. So I'm setting it up like this with a number one Gamagatsu. Super sticky. And a PBJ. Um, I stand a better chance of breaking off, but off of this ledge, there's not a whole lot of small ledge chunk. Um, it's all big stuff. So I'm just going to kind of groove around fish as quietly as I can so as not to spook. This is a pressured ledge. It's a pressured area. These fish, it's fair to say, see a lot of things thrown at them. So we're gonna just kind of relax and sit tight and see what we can come up with. And I missed the bite. Got it that time. First fish of the morning. Threw my worm, but I think it's still retrievable. Really good hook set, you can see right in the corner of the mouth where it's supposed to be. Barely hooked. Hook just fell right out. Little large mouth. How about that, y'all? Beautiful little fish. Nice. Alright, let's let him get back to it. Let's see if we can pick up his big brother. Alright, we got our worm back. One thing that I will note about these Yamamoto's is that they will tear up eventually. So you want to try and give them as much life as you can. And one way I do that is when I'm putting the worm through, putting the hook through the worm. I'll start out on one side, and then I'll move it to the other side. Then I'll move it in the middle. So you just keep moving where that exit point of the hook is. A lot of what I'm doing when I worm fish is I'm watching my line. And you'll notice that line will drop at a pretty even pace, and if you see it start to move forward a good bit, or faster than it should be falling, you've got a fish. If you know that you're at a certain depth, like there's about 60 feet in front of me right here, um, so if you see it stop, and you know it should still be falling, you got a fish. So those things are real important. Watch your line. There's a the fish. That's a good one. That's a real good one. Feels like a small mouth. Oh, that's a good one. Holy cow. That is a really good fish, y'all. 
<laughs> look at this one. Oh, boys and girls, look at this fish. Oh my goodness gracious. Oh my goodness, you are a pretty, pretty fish. Come here, baby. Come here. This is what we were looking for yesterday, huh, Richie? Dang on. Holy cow. You are gorgeous. Come here, baby. Okay, okay, okay. Alright. It's okay, buddy. I'll get you out of this predicament. Come here, big girl. Uh-uh. Alright. Just a little hook like that. Look at you, baby. Now this. This is what we're looking for this morning. This is absolutely what we're looking for this morning. Big girl. Alright. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This is a beautiful, beautiful bass. Holy cow. I'm so proud of this fish. All right, baby, come on. See you, baby. mentioned earlier kind of being as quiet as possible but all bets are off if I start seeing them bust out here where I can reach them uh, with like a lipless or a jerk bait or anything like that I've got one of my Jekyll bait lipless thread fin shad tied on right now to my bait caster and the bait caster of choice this morning is a seven foot falcon coastal medium and a fish is on oh and I missed it son of a gun son of a gun man that felt good too it was a good bite hey so this is really cool this wasn't here when I came out this morning Robert and Michael. Very pretty. This little thread fin shad looks so pretty coming through the water. It's got weight transfer in it so it doesn't spin when it gets casted. Gets cast? Casted? I don't know. Is that even a word? Um, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I just need it to catch me a fish now. Jekyll Bates. Good! Nice! I knew you could do it. That's decent. Good, you got your camera? I got you. You have a little toss back. Good job. No, you're fine there. Much easier on her. Perfect. Good release. Good catch. On camera. You did great.
I saw it. I saw it. I know you had one. You should have set that hook a little harder. I got it. No, yours was much bigger. Yours was much bigger than this, but I'll take it. Wanted that bait. Watch out, buddy. Watch out. Okay, all right, easy, easy guy. Easy, easy, easy. All right, all right. Stop. All right. Let's get you back in. There it goes. Okay, and I'm snagged. Hang on, let me break this snag. Good morning, everybody. It is the last morning here at Norfolk. Kind of overcast, cloudy. I love these conditions. Should be good bass bite this morning. Wish we didn't have to leave. I would stay here year long if I could. But got to get back to work. We've had a lot of fun, and I've really enjoyed it. So let's uh, let's get the poles out. Let's figure out what baits we're going to use and get after them. Lost the Ocho. Oh no, I didn't lose the Ocho. First fish of the morning and it's a good one. Wow, okay, so I'm gonna want to get down with this. Now it threw it, but it might have thrown it. Oh, and unfortunately that was a quick release that I did not intend. So that tells me two things. Number one, I'm too far up and that could happen and I don't want to damage any fish. Uh, I will consider that a catch. That was fun, um, but I either should have pulled it into me a little bit faster or I should have been a little bit lower so that the release could have been better, hopefully. The fish is going to be okay. It swam off just fine. Um, but it's important that's not going to be edited out of this video um, for that reason. Because that was a mistake. That shouldn't happen. Um, try not to throw fish distance. Um, if you guys ever watch MLF, you'll notice that they get penalized when they do a fish release that isn't right at the water edge. So, And that's, that's for the integrity and the health of the fish. So that's what not to do. I tried to hoist that thing up. Um, also, if I were in a tournament and I were on a boat, that would have cost me a decent fish. That was probably over two pounds. Definitely would have been a keeper. Got lucky. Got the Ocho back. And that fish chewed it up. <laughs> that's all right. Because here's what we do. Ocho's still got plenty of weight on it. Cut that tip off. Don't throw it out in the water. Hmm. Salt and coffee. Yes, I actually did lick that. Because I want to know. I mean, who doesn't want to know if it really tastes like they say it tastes? That's the only problem. There we go. Push that through. And these things are so doggone thick that they virtually make themselves weedless. It just kind of textbows that a little bit. And uh, let's 
see what else is down here. As long as they're under the ledge and they're not like out here somewhere, probably can't see me. Let's see what else we can get. Coffee was really good this morning. Getting little taps on this guy. further the cast I can do, the better, because this is gen clear water, as y'all can see. It is picture perfect. Can't get any prettier than this. And that's one of the reasons, talking to you, Cornell, it's one of the reasons that worms work just about year round, if not all year round. Even when they're suspending, even when they're down deep, even when the lake turns over, even when the water is ice cold. A smaller finesse presentation is going to get the job done when nothing else does. Just slow yourself down. And I've found throughout the years, and Cornell, you probably have too, that the, the quality of fish sometimes is far and beyond what you're going to get on a small reaction bite with crankbait or jerkbait, although I've gotten some, gotten some monsters. You know, I've yet to try that whopper plopper, and it looks so much fun. I think we're going to have to try that when we get back to the home front. shake might be a good hook set. This feels pretty good. And I can't horse it in because this is six pound. This is six pound test, y'all. And this, I don't have my uh, TV producer. There we go. There's a little drag. I don't have my TV producer set on the drag. You are a walleye. Oh my goodness. Look at this, boys and girls. This is a nice, nice walleye. Look at that. Oh my goodness. And I do not have pliers with me. Can y'all see that? Holy cow. All right, so that is a keeper walleye. We're going to get a measurement on it. I am going to pull it in. I've got no choice. What I'm going to try and get done with this is to get the, uh, get the actual line, holy cow, on a worm, which is surprising. Look at the teeth on that one. My goodness. I need to release a little bit of line here just so I can get it up. Holy cow. Beautiful, beautiful fish. I'm trying to keep this line tight because, boys and girls, if you have not caught these before, I caught my first one up here. They are fierce fighters. They'll pull your drag. 
unbelievable, unbelievable fight on him. And I'll tell you, if I can just get this hook out of it, which I don't know if I'm going to be successful at right here. I don't want it to slash my fingers up because it will. The other thing is handling these guys because their gill plate is crazy. So this thing is barely hooked. Gosh, this is pretty. And I, I know I told you guys in the first and second day, ooh, I have nicked this up on these rocks out here, but this is a finesse rod. It's uh, it's my go-to. It's a Pal Max 3D paired with an Abu Garcia Aura SX30. It's got some scratch and dings on it, but man, this is a great little, little reel. It's a 5.81 gear ratio, so it's as far as spinning reels go, it's fairly quick. Um, pretty much the, the highest gear ratio you're going to get on a spinning reel that I've seen so far. Now, I know technology changes all the time, but uh, you're looking at about a 6.3. So, the, the basics behind it and the most important thing to know is the higher the gear ratio, the faster the line comes back in to your spool. In this case, every time I turn this one time, it picks up five feet of line. We shall see. There it is. Biggin. What are you? Oh, get off of that rock, get off of that rock. Ah, get off the rock. Okay, so half an ocho works. <laughs> All right, now the mistake we made last time, we do not make now. This is a nice little Kentucky spot. Come on, come on back. Okay, come on. Come on, little fella. Come to Jenny. Right in the corner of the mouth where it's supposed to be. Look at that. Pretty little girl. Beautiful little bass. Man, you're pretty. And you are a spot because of where your jawbone is. Pretty, pretty, pretty fish. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. We're just going to give you a nice, gentle... And away you go.